is home. It's the focal point for UK Bungara. We saw Aston on the other side and like Aston have already won and I was like, yo, this set's good. I was a bit like, oh, this could go either way. And I, at that point, our heart sank a little bit because I was thinking, God, am I going to be second again? Like, I mean, like, is this a third time? Should I just give up? First place. Some would say it was a very controversial year as well, 2019. When is it not? 2019, there was a lot of tension between the teams, I'd say. I remember coming off that stage, everyone was so confident that we'd won. I was probably the most confident I'd ever been, ever, coming off that stage. What do you say to those that believe Aston should have won on the night? They're, they're entitled to their opinion. Opinions can't be wrong. Yeah, Aston should have won that, yeah. What else do you want me to say? Dancing execution. I think that they had stronger dancers. Yes, I'll stick by that. Were we the best dancers on the night? Yes. Did we have the best set? Yes. Did we have the best mix? Yes. Did we have the most presence? Yes. Yeah, we lost. But, fair play. Kings won. Can't take that away from them. It's the best they've ever danced to. They put out some novel ideas, but were Aston the better team on the night? Of course. The competition got to a level now where people were starting to have conflict. At that point, I was like, this is now going into a realm where it doesn't need to go. And I think a couple of teams got involved in some to and froms, which I guess could have been avoided. Aston felt they had done enough to retain their crown, but Kings ended up with their first win since 2008. Let's get into it. You judged in 2019? Yeah. And you didn't show on stage? Yeah. Why? Complete disagreement with the result. Like, it wasn't just the result, it was the way that everything had was discussed backstage. There's, there's this big drama that's happening backstage. I think there's this kind of like conflict. This I can actually say to be fair, there was definitely conflict between uh, Deepak and another judge, shall we say. I have a lot of respect for the guy. I think he's done a lot for UOB and for GCC and he's brought out competition in us. In the judges' room at the time, he had an opinion, and that opinion was that Aston should have been first place. So he was trying to understand why that was the case. And so once he realized that I didn't have Aston placing, I became the target for all questioning, for all accusations. It became quite heated, really, right? And and I, I don't mind saying that it was more from his part, the heat. Wow. I, th I think... I think what had started to happen, if I'm completely honest with you, is that issues from external... So obviously all these external teams were built up from the university teams doing their own thing. So Imperial went to AJ, the UOB guys, um, some were at NS, and then we, we had some guys at GCC with the Aston. And then that had its own rivalry outside of the university scene, which would then spill over either way. Kings said, you know, Kings have done this bit before. And then I got a comment back saying, oh, but you guys do this year after year. You guys use the same sound bite. I was like, I'm not talking about us here. I thought the placings were wrong. I think they got robbed. I don't think Kings were better than Aston. Like just the manner of it. Like I'd ask basic questions at the back. Who danced better? A simple question, right? One guy, the oh, Kings executed better. It's like, gee, like, come on, man. I tried my best to give as straight answers as I could, but you know, sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's difficult to kind of 
think of these things. From what I heard, I have no evidence or proof for this, but from what I heard, some of the judges didn't want Aston to win. 2018 was my first time judging, but I was a shadow judge, so my marks didn't count. To, to dispel any myths about any you know, way I feel about certain teams, I, I placed Aston first. That routine was phenomenal, right? And in 2019, I placed them fourth, right? That's where my marks ended up putting them. I remember a narrative going around, which was the reason that Aston didn't come first was because it wasn't anything different than what they did the year before. So Kings always used to bring something different, but this year they brought something different and it was really hitting. You could tell they've, they've just been learning. For me, it was, it was the winning set. I think King's done brilliantly. I think what they've done was fantastic. I think their opening was incredible. It was one of the best openings I've seen, 100%. But beyond that, I don't think just the opening wins you this set. There's an unfair advantage when you win so many times where you have to sort of be different. And it is unfair because you're being compared to yourself. I think because Aston set themselves such a high target the year before, they were expected to do even better. And I think they were probably on par with the year before, probably right. They didn't improve that much and they weren't that great, but they were the best team on the night. The fact is that they had 16 strong dancers who executed a set like really good and really clean. So it was like, oh, we're not impressed by that. And I think that ultimately it, it is wrong because you're not going there subjectively to judge, to basically, you're there for that particular moment. So that particular moment, that team was the best in every aspect, that team was the best. So to use a narrative that we wanted to see something different and Kings showed us that, I, I think that's, that's not objective judging, that's subjective judging because that's you going there knowing that this is what I want to see and if someone doesn't bring that, I'm going to mark them down. If someone does bring it, I'm going to, I'm going to mark them favourably. That's really important to understand different. It's more like the risks. And I feel as though that Kings took a risk because they were doing, in that particular competition, they brought something different than what other people were bringing. I'm not trying to say they were bringing something better than what anyone else was bringing, but it attracted what I was looking for anyway, and I just saw that as the winning set. Man City have the same style of playing every game. Are you just going to say like, all right, they don't deserve to win because they just keep coming and counter-pressing and doing... No, that's that's their way of performing, and that's what Aston did. Now, could we go into like smaller details about like the execution and stuff like that? Yeah, you could. And could you argue the fact that Aston were probably better with their technique and execution? Yeah, you probably can, most likely, and I'll probably be for that as well. However, when I'm looking at the general picture and I'm actually sitting there as like a Congo enthusiast, I'll be like, it's Kings because I enjoyed what they were doing on the night. And even if I look back at it, I still think still Kings. For me, at a university level, cleanliness is important, but like the dancing ability is very, very important. And there was no one close. There was no one close in terms of dancing ability. I think the thing that really frustrated him was that there was nothing he could do or say in that room that was ch that would change my opinion. I'm, I'm there to express a view. This is my view. Kings didn't do anything wow that was just like you can discredit all of Aston's dancing ability that this that should now be the winning thing. No other judge said anything. There were other judges in the room. There were shadow judges in the room. There was a president in the room. No one said anything for a little while. It was just Deepak talking to me. Rav, Chohan and Bhavan backstage as well. They were like shadow judging. They had Aston as clear winners. I had Aston as clear winners. Uh, Randy Soho, Aston clear winners. Fair enough, he felt strongly a certain way. And then, then I can flip that round and say, if you feel that strongly as a judge, maybe that influenced your decision. Yeah, fair, fair argument that like, you can put that forward. But again, like I'm asking 
partially subjective questions, but partially you should know what is better execution. And I don't think, I, you put that set in front of anyone, you get some guys from SPD, whatever, you say, Who, which team executed better on the night? I don't think, you, I don't think you're going to get anyone that says Kings, apart from Kings. I don't think even them, like even Sim I spoke to, and I said, we, execution wise, he was better, he goes, yeah, Aston executed better. It is what it is. I, I can justify where I placed everybody on, on that day. I did, in fact. After the night we spoke to Omran outside of Apollo, just sort of getting some feedback about Aston's positioning. I just didn't understand where that came from. Why were they fourth? It was expected that I was going to come outside and there would be people who would be unhappy. I think we were there for about 45, 50 minutes outside. Some people might find that a little bit intimidating. In some respects it was. There was a whole group of people around me and it was just me basically trying to explain why I thought something. I mean, he was the judge at the end of the day, so, you know, somewhere down the line you have to respect his decision. But I wasn't agreeing with the things that he was saying then. His, his justification behind why he placed Aston fourth with that performance um, is really beyond me. That whole conversation was, was really infuriating. I still stand by my rankings of, 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 the, uh, of the teams on that day. The main thing was being able to justify it, which I could. I'll be honest, I think Aston deserved to win. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, man. Like my own personal ex-captains have said that, to me, that segment is not good. And then I would disagree with that. I, I really want to put out that particular segment. They've got a different style. They, they, they've come from a different era. I'm sure they have their reasons for why, why they placed it fourth. And I think rightly so, because they've got their own experiences and things that they are looking at. I would probably disagree with that, but you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. You tend to have many like really good dancers, great dancers, judge a competition and will I have opinions about certain things? Yeah, of course I will. Am I going to disgrace anyone else? No, I'm not, because it takes experience. Like I said, I've got the experience, but there's a lot of people that won't. But it's going to take people like myself, people like Beric, and people like Sok as well, even Dav, to pass on some of that knowledge and that experience. Look at that, how are you guys? Very good, man, very good. You talk to us, bro. Get Jasmine, let's get first. Say it's all over. That's stupid. What do you mean? How did you enjoy it? You know, you remember it? How was that, man? How do you feel? Amazing, man. Yeah? Ready to go again. Was it, yeah? Ready to go again. Do you want to get the team together? We've got all 16 in here. Yo, guys, told you, and just like that, it's over. Yeah? So firstly, I just want to say this. Firstly, I just want to say you guys should be so... You guys should genuinely be so proud of yourself because this team has been so close to dropping out so many times. Yeah? Straight up. So firstly, I genuinely think you should like give it to yourself. Because you're all good. That's it. You guys. Yeah, you guys haven't done, you're not, you're not newbies anymore. You guys done that, so genuinely for freshers, you guys done fucking amazing. How did you feel when you saw all those mistakes on stage? It's the first time I've watched a Bangalore competition since TBS 2016. And yeah, when you know what's coming, so obviously I knew exactly what was going to happen in the Aston set. All I could see was mistakes. So. I couldn't really even appreciate any of the good bits, so for me, I was like, damn, like, I didn't know how to feel. But then I had seen Leicester, Kings and St. George's on the night too, and even still, I felt Aston had the most presence, but, like, I remember telling the team, can they win this? Yes. In my eyes at that point, I thought it'd be tight, because the only thing I had seen from Aston were mistakes, but yeah, I remember thinking that, damn. They've done a lot better than that. <coughs> what, what I think is, like, for example, God, it, things did hit, but there were a few mistakes. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm being straight up honest with you. Um, for me, I could see them because, obviously, we know the set. We know the set quite well and everything, but there were a few mistakes, like silly ones too. Like, did you forget to start jump? Yeah, I did it. Did you did it early in it? Did yeah, yeah, so, you know, there are a few little things and, like, every segment. You lost Kunda and stuff, didn't it? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even, even, even realise. But so apparently lost Kundas up. For me, it definitely wasn't the best you've danced, but it's standard, isn't it? It happens, isn't it? Like, that's it. I think, I think general consensus is that nobody, nobody really knows who's taking it. For me, it was <coughs> definitely the best set on the night. Yeah, easy. 
definitely the best mix on the night. Easy. But one thing I can say, like, even though there are mistakes, yeah, I don't know if you guys would agree with me, I think these guys are fucking presents. On, oh, that, yeah, on that shisha you guys came in, yeah. it was like, yo, who the fuck are these guys? Honestly, that like, there was definitely a lot of presence there. Um, and even the ending, you guys like, put up the level, there's bear to get at the end, full cargo deep, like, J. Believe that, Chumbo, bro. Fucking, you got such a loud scream when you hit that. It was disgusting, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the people behind me were so vexed because I was screaming and saying, <laughs> yeah? So, I, I think that, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm not here telling you, yo, guys, you fucking smashed it, you guys are gonna take it, because I don't know. Yeah, I personally think you guys were better than Kings. A lot of people saying, yo, Kings were better sick. I thought they were dead. Yeah. I genuinely thought they were dead. <coughs> yeah, they were a lot messier than you, this, that. But I think Leicester, they done a very easy set, but they did execute it very well and they were clean. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, look, anything could happen at this point. We don't know. Do you guys deserve it? Definitely best set, better, best mix, easily. But that, sadly, there were a lot of very silly mistakes. Can you win? Yes. Yeah. Is it tight? Yes. Yeah. Simple. Can you win? You definitely are. You're in a running. You're in, th there's no way they're not considering you. But Simba said that there's a team. Simba said you guys probably going to win. Simba said you guys probably going to win. So look, it's not. I'm here to be real. I'm not here to give you, give get your guys hopes up. Yeah. I don't want to gas you guys up. Say yo, you're gonna win, and then you guys come second there. Can you do it? Yes. Is it tight? Yes. But either way, guys, honestly, fucking give it up for yourself. You guys are allowed to go see your family, but can you make sure everybody, everyone's and your team is back in this room by 9.30 for five minutes? <laughs> place, that's it, that's all we're going to for now. Thank you. 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 Thank Oh, two two years ago, other teams fucking celebrating placing. Of course, we're only here for, for for one thing. We're here to win, yeah. But firstly, honestly, you guys just celebrate that you're gonna drop out, and now you're fucking on the podium, yeah. So come on, bro, you're on the fucking podium. Can you take it? Uh, what do we say? Yes, you can. Is it gonna be tight? Yes, it will. That's it. Look, man. Whatever the results, there's ninety percent freshers in this team. Some of you never fucking know. When I said to you, imagine being on stage, you're like, oh, what does that mean? You know, know what it's like. Do not downplay your hard work, the effort that you put in, and the time, and even for the people that have been on stage before, yeah, and the captains, right? You guys are putting a collective of work that has got you this result, and do not downplay how hard you've worked. I've seen you lot, you've gone through an excruciating amount of pain, some of you, especially some of you, right? No matter what the, what the, no matter what the outcome is, everyone has put so much hard work here. Everyone deserves some fucking respect. Yes. That's how okay. gas George is. Look, look how gas they are. Genuinely. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the. Yo, 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 guys, 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 look at that. And you know, you ain't celebrating like that because you want something more. Is that valid? Of course it is. Yeah, be grateful. But I'm telling you, if you guys win, celebrate, be respectful. If you guys come second or third, likewise, you show everyone respect. You clap for everyone. Because the winners, whoever wins today, if it's us, if it's St. George's, if it's Leicester, fair play, well deserved. Yeah, so we clap to them, we shake their hands. Because they're just like you. They, had, they, they went through pain just like you. They all came down for the last eight minutes. Please, come on. please, do not downplay what you've done. Please Come on, man. Come on. We're fucking proud of you, man. What team? Master! What team? Master! What team? Master! Time is it! Game time! Thank you, let's go, man. Be proud of yourself. Be fucking proud of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Western to the coaches and Aston, you are the three finalists university. So these guys have made the top three. Leicester, Aston and St. George's. When Aston are announced as winners, what's your thought process? It was the most... It was a great win. But it was a kind of win that I felt like saying, you know, everyone else should be ashamed at this point. It doesn't matter how hard they tried to bring the name of Aston down. It doesn't matter that they collectively all came together to vote against Aston to make sure we had 2 minutes and 30 seconds of stage rehearsal time to start the show with minus one point to be given those disadvantages to have the mental strain and burden on the day you know Jay and Gurdip, I saw them not being they, they couldn't even get ready together with their team properly because they're too busy outside arguing with the committee God knows how that felt for them like going on stage with all that kind of stuff can't imagine but to have all that against you, to like being shown no love by no one that year, and then you win, I felt like it was a big slap in the face for the committee, a big slap in the face for every other team. And like, honestly, like, good on Aston, and good on them for throwing that dirt on Aston. It only made Aston shine brighter. And that's it. The way I celebrated on stage, like, I'm walking, I don't even look happy almost. I'm like going there, and I'm like, my arms are up and I'm just like experiencing it, taking it all in. I've done that for mum and dad, done that for all the fans, I've done that for everyone that booed. First time I heard anyone boo Aston, I don't know for everyone that was there. That's how I felt at the time and I felt this is what it feels like 
to be great throughout all the dirt. And yeah, of course, the events on the day, if Aston had had a nicer come up to the comp, maybe would have celebrated in a different fashion. But I mean, I was embracing what I felt at the time. Aston is a culture. Aston's not just a Bhangra team. We've developed and I think have the biggest legacy in UK Bhangra. We've gone beyond just having a competitive team. From the people we've collaborated with, to the shows we put on, to the socials we do, on the social media aspect, from the following we have, there's nothing greater. No one in the UK has done it bigger or better. And that's straight fact. There, you know, people want to come to Aston for the Bhangra team. If you're asking me, is Aston too cocky? If you're asking from a competitive standpoint, is the Aston Bhangra team too cocky? No. We are what we are. People can label us with whatever they want to. We are some people's heroes. We're some people's worst enemy. You make that decision. You watch our sets. If Aston ever compete again, compete against us. Let us know how you feel. We are who we are. We're just encapsulating greatness. Aston won and yeah, there was a lot of lot of noise after man from like Leicester that they should have won. Because Leicester, etc., they danced their set very well. They did, they did, yeah. But Definitely. it was just their set, then not the enough. Set was but there's, a, there's been a lot of noise. I had Aston winning. And that's like, there's no bias there. I've been to their practice, what was it, two, three weeks before? I, I had a different opinion. I saw, obviously, Aston had a superior set, it was clear. But to make that many mistakes, this is a Bangla competition. Yeah, there were many mistakes. Like, mm. how, if you're not dancing correctly, how do you win a comp? Yeah. Mm. So where do you draw that line? Now you've got a, a set that's just superior, and then you've got a team that's danced very well. Mm. Now, how, how do you say this This is the one that wins it? I it's to the point where it starts taking away from it, right? I think the that's really what it comes down to. It's always biased. When the judges feedback that day, I spoke to Suki, he dropped him off to his car, yeah? Mm. Uh, like, all the judges said the same thing. It was like, you bought something completely different. When I asked Suki and like uh, Rajve Kambo, about, yo, did you see this mistake, that mistake? Like, when you watch things first time, you just can't, yeah, you, just, yeah, you just can't clock. Yeah. Like, there were bare mistakes, but... Yeah. You said this, so you've always seen that you knew what to, what expect, what to expect. expect. We had no idea what to expect, mm. so for us, those mistakes, we didn't clock until you yeah. point them out. Yeah. And also, every team will complain after watching the video, pressing pause, rewind that five seconds. Let's see that again, innit? Pause that, take a picture in the group chat. Oh, I fucked it, he fucked it. But they're not doing it on what you see on those eight minutes on the night. Who is the kid? The guy from Leicester? Yeah, Leicester captain. Saying what? what, what what's he saying? Do we have it? Do, what, what's he saying? TBS raped. TBS raped. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that Aston were the best team. E e everyone, e everyone knows that Aston started with minus one and still won by six, seven, eight points. Clear win. What's rigged? That, that well, where, where, I, I don't get it. Is, is there a controversy? Is there meant to be a controversy right now? It, it, is there a controversy around 2022? There's, what, 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 what's the controversy? There, in, in my, in my opinion, there, there's no controversy. What about the stories you're putting up? What about them? Which you know, anybody wants to know how to win 10K? I'm offering a service. If any team out there wants a service, 10 grand. And it's fa fair price. You don't see how that can come across antagonizing or cocky. People put me in this predicament. You guys wanted to see the kid lose. Kid won five times. 10 grand. Welcome, guys. Oh, my God. Red to get the bottle out, bro. Don't bring a fucking bottle. So 2020 was a difficult one because I really thought we'd won the year before. It was my one year to prove to everyone that Aston are still great. Everything the judges wanted the year before, we gave it to him. 
So that's the first time in my career I had to choreo something, not the way I wanted to. That's the game plan that we went in with that year. If we had lost in 2020, I would have been like, fuck this. Five, six, seven, eight, one. I'm proud of that set. I think it's an amazing set. I think I'm just proud of where the team's come from and where it is now. There are people that will want to come to this university just to dance on this Bhangra team because their reputation has got so high. I never thought I'd see the day where people would pick Aston over you. What Aston is now and not only the team side but the social side of it and the family side of it and what they provide to people at the uni and people outside, it's just it's crazy. It's just, when you get people on it, they can do amazing things. There was a time where we were just chasing UFB. We've got to get there. They were the ones that had four stars on their jumpers, do you know what I mean? That's where we wanted to be, and to see us at a point where that's where we are, I'm just proud. Ishan, from where he started and where he is now, probably one of the most successful dancers in the UK right now, or ever. When I heard that that team was all new, 2018, like most of it, most of them were new and he trained them up to become those dancers in that amazing set. I rate him so highly because like I said, he, he trained newbies to become better dancers than the whole country. Like that's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Who has the biggest legacy at TBS? Which team? I can't, I can't, I can't say. It's, it's too close between Imperium and UOB. UOB, without a doubt. They've won it the most. I think they've brought the most iconic sets to TBS. The 2014 set is probably my, one of my favourite sets. And I think the 2016 mix is probably my favourite mix of all time. That's 100%. And they should have won. When Kings won, they should have won that as well. And imagine they did win that. <laughs> they they would be the most successful team ever. I think it's Imperial. Just because their dancers have not only done really well from the pool we have every year to get three wins, but we've also put on the show that everyone enjoys. So I think from that dual purpose, it means that we've given everyone 
something to enjoy and giving everyone the opportunity to even be there in the first place. So I think you can't ever downgrade them for that. Has Bangla in the UK peaked? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I think people like the glamour of being part of a Bangla team, to be a captain or to be, you know, a dancer on a team and you get the hoodie and you, you go to the after party and it's big, it's, you know, it's, it's fun and it is fun. And that is very important. But I'm not sure there are there are many people nowadays who are willing to put in the hard work that perhaps uh, me and, and, and others before me and, and a few years after me were willing to do. I think it's peaked. I think we're done here. I think people now, I don't know, if it's going to peak, it will happen in about three, four years again. It's not going to, I don't think it's going to happen now. I think all the people that put in the work, that put in the time to really study the craft are kind of done. You've had COVID. Who's coming back? We don't know. Um, we'll probably get a resurgence in people watching it. But how good it will be compared to the last stuff, I think maybe in three, four years, we might see something competitive. Oh, no, I'll always care. Bangra has given me so much. You know, I met my wife through Bangra. Got a beautiful family together because of it. It's more to come. I feel like Bangra is actually here to stay. Like, the, the, the idea, because people have heard about it and they want to actually oh, I knew my sister was, you know, in uni doing a bhangra. So, well, they're 16. By the time they get to 20, they'll, they'll, they'll probably start it off because they knew about their sister or their cousin or whoever. Who, yeah, they were there. The it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive impact. Definitely. Yeah, I think there was an area up to like 2014, 15, with likes of all our lot with Ram, Mahi, everyone else. And then there was the next generation that came in and they've, they've come in and I think they, they've peaked. 18, 19, and then even 20 was a, a great year as well, fasting. But um, after that, it's just it's just kind of cut off. It's hard to say as well. I don't think there's that hunger anymore that there used to be in the scene. You know, you asked me the question earlier, was it all about winning? Yeah, it was. You know, I always see these teams that, and I don't want to sound, you know, obnoxious or arrogant with this, but when you see competitions where teams celebrate coming third, it's, that's a mentality that shouldn't exist, in my opinion. Yes, celebrate yourself for coming third, second, first, but you have to have that mentality to want to be the best. And in the UK circuit, any one team can flip it in a year. And so you can train hard, have your head down and work hard and come first. You can, it's been done before and it happens year after year after year. I think we've got one of the best scenes, you know, we, we talk about North America, we talk about kind of India. Our mix of the two, I think, is, is really, really good here. And we've got some great dancers, some great sets coming out. And I think the real challenge for teams is how can they keep doing the step forward? I mean, that's the thing that we're all really interested with now is now that we've kind of got to this point where we really seem to know what we're doing, how do teams take the extra step? This is where the real play is now with, with the scene, is how can you differentiate yourself? I was fortunate enough to be part of the circuit from 2014 to 2018, okay? I think the stuff that we were coming out with 2017, 2018 was insane. Sets, mixes, formations, it was just, you know, like, the rivalry was so good. You had teams like from America, Canada, Australia, who were openly saying the scene in the UK is the scene to be in right now. So I think that was the peak, man. And I think GCC, AJ, Vasta, even like Eurobe, Aston, Kings, Imperial, solid teams, man. But I think, unfortunately, I think as we're seeing a lot of the seniors now go, and a lot of the youngers coming through, I think we're going through that phase now where it's it's gonna have to pick up again. So it's not a bad thing. I just think it's one of those where you can't consistently be getting better and better. There's gonna be a point where your older dancers retire and you have newer dancers coming. So I think I think it will come again, but I think right now it, it definitely has peaked. The legit advice it gives for people making the set and trying to compete is don't always watch the year before. Don't always watch the team who won the year before because you'll constantly be training behind. You'll always be a year behind. And that's generally what always happens. You have a team that comes in, that wins, does really well, 
And then next year, everyone thinks, oh, that was good. That worked really well. Let's just do the same thing again. Oh, we've got this. Well, you've not got it because you're a year behind. And those teams that are forward thinking and coming up with new creative ideas, they've leapfrogged you now because you're you're a year behind. So my advice would be would be to sort of, yeah, look around and see what people are doing, but don't always go off the previous year. The standards will always go up. You have to be different. Well, I think my best advice is you need to try and make your own identity and like own image, okay? Of course, you can look back at sets for advice and inspiration, but, you know, you can't be like, oh, GCC won or UOB won, let's try and copy their formula or let's see what Aston did. You kind of need to now, I think, because it's been a few years anyway, I think sets are going to be different, mixes are going to be different. I think everyone just needs to, like, make their own image and just back it all the way. I think like even mixes, unfortunately, that's become diluted now. Everyone's trying to unfortunately copy this whole GCC style of mixing. And I think you hear it everywhere now. Like you go to a comp and every mix sounds the same. It's just like, it's just not the same anymore. So I think you need to try and find your own style and then you just need to back it. I think the issue now with Bhangra is, and I've spoken to about this quite a lot to a lot of people is, People, a lot of the time when I'm speaking to some dancers, no names, some dancers, when they speak to me, it's like, what will hit, how will we win? But I never get the conversation like, how do I become a better dancer? How do I do this move properly? Or where does this move come from? Or, you know, there's never a deeper understanding of what they're doing. It's almost like, what is the formula to win? What is the formula to get a win and yeah that's fine for a comp- competition point of view but the people that have gone and won and the people that have gone and built teams and built like a name for themselves or whatever they were focused on the competition yeah but they also had this like resolute passion for learning the dance form right so we got to remember is now you have the benefit of people who know it and you can ask them ask them the right questions and learn Bhangra before just learning uh, how what's a winning set. Now, I see people now like analyzing winning sets and be like, they did this and they did 16 beats of this. and It's like, that's not how you're going to win. Like they did that, which means it's done, which means you do it again and you're going to lose, right? So I think people aren't learning the dance form. I think they're trying to learn just how to win. And I think that is the issue because remember when we were learning it, we had YouTube. Right. It was always about just enjoying and appreciating the beauty of Punjabi culture, which is so rich and it's so filled with so much passion. Where you have people from other cultures, Tamil, Gujarati, English, coming and learning. So do it for the right reasons. You know, do it to make friends. Do it to learn. Do it to learn about your culture.